Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davison Art. It's Lois here today and parts of the UK this week have received some snow and a last icy blast just before spring. Sadly we didn't get any snow in my in my part of the country so I decided to paint this snow scene for you instead. I've been inspired by this photograph from Pixabay. I shall leave the link um, to this photograph in the description below um, along with um, details about the paints that I use and my paper, etc. I don't leave details to my brushes because I think you can just work with whatever brushes you've got and achieve similar effects. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed um, 140 pound weight watercolour paper today. Um, it's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees so that gravity will help me paint. I'm going to use the wet in wet method and really simplify this painting just to its sort of essence, if you see what I mean. I'm going to try not to overwork it. So I'm using a large wash brush to wet my page all over. Um, I'm leaving a few little um, unwetted areas for some soft and hard edges, but I'm wetting my sky area completely first. I'm going to mix up um, a sort of a greyish blue using ultramarine blue and a touch of lavender. Um, it's a really watery mix um, so that I can get good coverage and keep things nice and light. And I'm going to use the same colour for the sky and then bring that same colour down into my snow so that my snow isn't completely bright white or totally unpainted paper. Um, my snow will have that sort of hint of blue as it reflects that pale wintry sky. And remember that everything lightens up a lot as it dries with watercolour. So make sure it goes on a little bit darker than what you want it to look. That can be a bit tricky to start with, especially for beginners. Um, but just try and bear that in mind. So a little bit darker and just have faith that it will dry back to the colour that you want. I hope you can see I'm leaving a few sort of white patches across the background. I'm hoping that will give me a little bit of light and brightness behind my line of distant trees and my hills. So this is a synthetic um, mop brush and I'm using it with a mixture of raw sienna, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and a touch of lavender to um, just get that lovely colour of the grasses and the reeds across the mid-ground. So I keep looking at my photo reference to look at where those colours are and just dropping them into this wet and wet wash so everything softens and diffuses. Now I'm mixing up um, a mid value for my distant tree line and this is using indigo and there's some burnt sienna in it. I'm just dropping it in loosely so that I get that nice blurry wet in wet look and also dropping it across um, that gap there for the distant hills in the photograph. So sort of dotting a bit of paint here and there to break up that edge putting some variety to the height of my trees, not being sort of too um, worried about copying exactly where the tree positions are in the photograph. I'm going for an impression of the photograph and not a copy. Then just a little bit across the foreground, not too much, just enough that it will just diffuse in and add a little bit of variety. But I want my foreground to be mostly unpainted and just that lovely pale um, sky colour. While it's still wet, using a slightly drier mixture of that darker colour, so a slightly darker mix, a bit more indigo in it, I'm dotting in some darks. Because my board's at 45 degrees, and because I'm painting wet in wet, these darks will still diffuse. They will also slightly run down so that they sort of are located at the base of those trees, and that will give me a shadow effect straight away, especially where that paint meets um, the colour of the reeds and the grasses. 
then just a little bit, a few touches of shadow here and there, working quickly before my paper dries. I think you can see that everything is still softening and diffusing. And then I can take a clean, damp brush and just soften back anything that looks a little bit too harsh and just sort of blend in a little bit. Um, my wash is just about finished now and I think I'm quite happy with it. Um, the way it is. I think the last thing I want to do is just use the corner of a plastic store card or you could use a palette knife, your fingernail or the end of a paintbrush um, just to scratch in to the paper and create a few very loose uh, simple tree trunks and branches just linking some of those canopies coming beyond the canopies in some places if you don't like etching like this, you can wait until your paper is dry and then use a rigger or some sort of lining brush to paint in your tree trunks. And once the painting is completely dry, then I intend to use a little bit of dry brush just to create the canopies, um, the, the fine mesh of canopies of dry twigs at the end of the winter branches. And then using the corner of the card again to scratch through the reed paint area to bring down some stems um, in the foreground, just poking out of the snow or to suggest that. I don't want to put too much detail into these reeds. Um, I want to keep this really loose. See if I can get away with it being very, very impressionistic. And so pulling down um, those foreground reeds at this stage helps me to achieve that very simple effect. So now I'm going to step away and leave it to dry completely and go and make myself a cup of coffee. So here's the wash. Um, it's dried completely and it's nice and soft. Um, I've got nice differentiation between the distant tree line, my reeds, the snow in the foreground and of course the sky. So I'm using the same dark mixture but slightly drier so that it looks darker to negatively paint around my tree trunks and to put in the dark at the base of my trees, making sure to leave a nice ragged edge um, which should give me negatively painted the tops, tops of the reeds, if you see what I mean. The brush I'm using is a size 8 synthetic Escoda Perla brush and it's really nice for getting in between these tree trunks and putting in these darks. And then I can um, rinse off the brush and dry it completely and use it to soften back around the edges to sort of blend it in a bit so that that dark colour becomes lighter as I go up higher into the branches. But being careful to make sure that I paint around some of the lighter marks there to give the impression of those tree trunks. So I'm painting um, sort of quite rich, creamy paint onto the dry painting. So in order to soften back, I use a damp brush or I can sort of smudge it a little bit with my finger and that just blends in this fresh paint into the background of the underpainting. And then I can work in exactly the same way all along the tree line, making sure that I keep a nice shape for my reeds coming across in front of the distant trees. So here is the rest of this stand of trees and you can see how the negative painting has produced the tree trunks and branches but it's also produced the ragged edge of the top of the mid-ground reeds. Just a little bit of that same treatment to the tree on this side.
And now I need to use the dry brush technique. So using that same brush and with a dry mixture of paint, which is made up of indigo and burnt sienna, I'm using the side or belly of the brush to scrape across the texture of the paper to give me those fine twigs at the end of the branches. I don't want to paint every twig, so this method uh, gives me the suggestion of detail rather than having to um, paint in every twig, which can look sort of a little bit artificial. So I'm quite pleased with the way this is looking so far. I think introducing those dark shadows at the base of the trees has really brought out um, the reeds, even though there's no detail, it's just a simple wash. So all I'm gonna do now is take my small calligraphy brush, any small brush with a good point will do, um, a lining brush or a rigger, and I'm just painting in a few um, tree trunks linking some of those canopies to the dry brush strokes that I just made. If any of them have gone on too dark for distant trees just quickly before it dries dab off with a tissue. I think that just brings the trees together quite nicely. I'm not going to put much detail in the foreground. I could put more detail into the reeds, but I've decided to keep it really simple. So just using um, raw sienna, yellow ochre and burnt sienna and my small calligraphy brush, I'm going to put a few simple dry brush strokes among the little marks that I etched into the wash to start with, just to suggest um, the reeds in the mid ground. You could put in more if you prefer, but I like the, the looseness of this. I think the very quiet area in the foreground and the midground of this painting leads the eye up to the row of distant trees, um, which I think is the focal point or the point of interest in this painting. Just a few little marks on this side to balance up the composition. And then just maybe three or four in the foreground um, coming of little grasses coming out of the snow. So using that warm colour and then dipping into a bit of my um, sky and snow colour just to add some subtle shadow to those grasses where they enter into the snow. Um, it's quite a sort of a grey sky day. Um, the sun is hidden, so there aren't any strong shadows. Um, except for the shadows in the distant tree line where the trunks and branches are quite thick and so what you're seeing there is not shadows cast by the sun it's more of an absence of light which stands out beautifully against the reeds so just a couple of finishing branches and i think i'm going to call that done so now it's time to remove the tape and have a look at it and see how it looks with a nice clean white border. This helps us to sort of see the painting with fresh eyes and so we can see whether we need to do anything else. I think as I said earlier, if you choose to paint in more reeds, if you try this painting, uh, then feel free. Um, I just was really fond of the way it looked, just quite kind of empty and desolate and bare like this. Um, and the textures and the colours and the subtle tones in the reeds are really pretty from the mixtures of paint. And there's some granulation that has happened on the page, which I think is really attractive. Well, I hope that was helpful and it's given you some ideas to try a similar scene for yourself. Um, and please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And um, click on the bell icon and you then will be notified every time we post. Morgana's got another beautiful demo coming up for you for Morgana Mondays. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. 
So I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.